go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what he'll say. Nice and kind, leading cobalt ice. He's a blue, cute, and deadly little guy. Seeing through the fog, old gods he slay. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what he'll say. Nice and kind, leading cobalt ice. He's a blue, cute, and deadly little guy. Seeing through the fog, old gods he slay. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what he'll say. Nice and kind, leading cobalt ice. He's a blue, cute, and deadly little guy. Seeing through the fog, old gods he slay. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what he'll say. Nice and kind, leading cobalt ice. He's a blue, cute, and deadly little guy. Seeing through the fog, old gods he slay. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king of the game. I believe in you, that's what he'll say. Nice and kind, leading cobalt ice. He's a blue, cute, and deadly little guy. Seeing through the fog, old gods he slay. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, go seven, go seven, go seven. Go seven, king. Hello, hello, hello. everyone's doing well on this fine fine Monday if it's good first one is indeed this one new player versus Neko Punch better Jake it's like it's Janna out you're fighting mr cannon Ooh, you think you might win congratulations welcome disc welcome hard to tell yeah yeah it's fair make new player into I like adder slightly more than Jake I know this map this is playing it normal not high funds hello Lou finally cast a stream you've been here before Happy Eclipse Day, that's true, that's true. Yo, replay gaming. I don't know. I finally watched uh, some Elegatua videos. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. And uh, I'm going to play... Not that I've, I haven't talked to him at all, but... Um, I saw that he makes 
Ocarina of Time randomizers. So I will play it. I'm going to play it on Saturday. On his little website thing is saying you can complete in two hours. I am not optimistic. <laughs> I haven't played Ocarina of Time in forever. But it should be fun. Hey, it's Sneaky Dragon. 1K versus 2K income. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the only difference I, that I know about between the normal and high funds version is just the level of income. Which does remind me, I need to submit the credentials for new developments to Advanced Wars by Web. I think I'll ask... Well, I want the, I want the forests that aren't hidden in fog. And I I really like those... Uh, the labs in reboot camp that give income but have no defense stars i mean our labs already have a purpose but maybe we could get like villages or something that would do the same thing for us i don't know we we're able to cast streams for the past week i'm so sorry i'm glad you can make it now sure the fta counter is also adjusted i don't think there's any big landmark difference all the same. There was a bug with Rachel Super. Was there a change recently? Change like, did they fix it? Hey, it did get fixed. Or so they say. It is thanks to Poland. Okay. We'll hop into this game. We got Noob Player in the bottom left versus Neko Punch in the top right. Adder versus Jake. Personally, I think that Jake is advantaged in this matchup. Uh, if the game goes, like once they hit the mid game to late game. Because uh, Block Rock is just so good. And there's a lot of planes on this map. Uh, although there isn't a ton in the like center where there can often be quite a bit of fighting. But the fact that Block Rock gives that plus two movement to all the land vehicles, it really helps to just keep up with any of Adder's uh, shenanigans. He's only getting a speed boost on like the transports, the infantry, and the air units for the most part to uh, take an advantage out over over Jake and the fact that like his normal power is better for sure. Okay, so both both players are going to go with these early tanks on their two base sides, which is fine. You don't always have to counter your opponent's aggression or like be defensive to your opponent's aggression. You can be just aggressive in return. And it looks like um, new player will still be able to build a tank in time to defend against this one. Like so. Although, it's not a, a perfect defend because this infantry is still available to be hit. But the same thing is true uh, on this side if Neko Punch decides to build a tank in defense against new player here. In which case, it it's kind of just a wash. Neither player got to interrupt a property, but they both get to uh, drain some resources out of it. Although over here, Deco Punch is far more aggressive into the center here than we see new player be. Yeah, there's not too much of a difference either or otherwise we get our same exchange over here and echo punch is already getting this city which is whoa this equivalent for new player we're gonna go for a tank chain to defend against this tank let's see the new player go for that Neko Punch is missing out on. They just got like the bottom cities a little bit faster. 
I didn't quite pick up on how Knuckle Punch got this uh, nice little economic advantage, but good on him. <laughs> hello, hello. I guess it was just the infantry bot from here took a different route. They just went pop pop over the mountains and new player did it. Okay, run on back. Little tank stare off. It's kind of it's gonna force a tank to be built from this base. Otherwise you just I mean it's not it's kind of a uh You could get away with this being like I'm not even gonna build a tank here because if their tank comes over here and hits your tank, then you have like all these infantry around and they also have this mountain here. So you can just pin their tank to you, repair your tank, build another tank and then kill their tank off. Just like bait them in that way, I guess. But uh, that's not how we're going to handle this one. Oh, interesting. I probably wouldn't do this it's it's kind of okay because neko punch is able to just start up the capture again so it's not like a big delay to the income but i don't quite see the purpose in attacking this infantry it's going to be pretty easy to back up and it's already captured the harbor So I, I don't think I would have interrupted the capture to go for that swing. That's okay. Infantry runs away. He's got a little tank back up. Ooh. Use the mech and the tank. It can only be hit from one side, so it's not a great attack for an echo punch. Attack from the shoals, you hit the tank. I guess. It's a little bit better than it looks because this mech uh, is actually not in a great spot unless it uses a power because if Neko Punch goes in for this tank swing, the mech would love to do that like attack and kill it off. But there's actually this tank in the way and it has nowhere to go because it'd be completely pinned in. So uh, in order for the mech to get an attack, this tank would have to die. Which is kind of funny. Four plus one move and you can make it to one of these tiles. However, there is another tank down here. I don't think it's really worth uh, going for just because it's funny. Ooh, we don't have a transport copter for Neko Punch, but we do, or for uh, for a new player, but we do for Neko Punch. Usually in these kind of games, the transport copter takes a long time to come out because it players see it as like a huge tempo loss to uh, spend five thousand funds and your airport to build the transport copter. The idea being like. Sure, you're going to get the comm tower and these uh, two cities eventually, but in the meantime, it's almost costing you an entire tank and your airport's production worth to uh, to do that. And your opponent might punish you elsewhere and like take some of these other cities and then build their own transport copter. Yo. You waited because the infantry that is going into the T-copter is capping this turn? Yeah, no worries. Okay. It goes for the swing over here. Makes sense to me. We can just back this up with another tank. Oh. Rest of attacks up here. Okay. Very important. Well, maybe very important is an exaggeration, but it's pretty important to make sure that. Uh, defensive terrain gets occupied near your units. Ideally, what happens is you go like tank infantry strike and there's another infantry that can start the capture. So it's both threatening to take the city and it stops your opponent from swinging from the city. OK, 
Because like here it was tank plus infantry kills infantry. And now your opponent gets like a really nice double swing. Like attack from the city and then finish off the tank kind of deal. You have the battle copter on the way though. Which is pretty nice. Okay, okay. Never mind. This tank decided to stand here. Um, that does help. That's what I was going to suggest. It does anyway. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That does help. Uh, they can. They do still have like this missile platform, but they don't have enough tanks to fully like uh, leverage this position in a way that would be too harmful. Plus, they don't quite have double com tower. Double com tower matters because if you have plus twenty percent firepower, you're guaranteed to get two hit KOs on same type units that do 55% base damage to each other, which would be tanks and infantry and the like. Fighters. Mechs and subs and medium tanks and the list goes on. So it's a, it's a really big firepower threshold to, to keep in mind. Neka Punch goes in for the attacks here, but New Player does have a pretty good um, vehicle count here. This copter is going to be two turns to get into this fight, but for New Player it only takes, or I mean, it takes uh, three turns. Cause one, one, two, and then it can fight. It's only two turns for this copter. Almost just one if it uses the power, but not quite. Looks like we went for a tank sacrifice. And we're going to go for this nice harbor capture. So the tank sack does result in uh, getting a tank kill. But it, it's always a little bit iffy about those kind, uh, with those kinds of things. I mean, I like going for them a lot because they're very tempo driven but value wise it's a essentially a trade of a tank for a tank <laughs> rip yeah exactly it's very important to be able to it with those fighters on city Ooh, new player with a base skip to get this transport copter. That's a tiny bit expensive, but uh, it's okay. I think it's pretty important to get this tank. So I don't think there's really a good... Maybe this tank you don't need. So, I mean, it's fine to get the tank into the like a base skip at this stage in the game, especially on the two base side. It's not a huge deal. Um, but if you didn't want to do a base skip, like right now, these two tanks are essentially covering each other against two tanks. So that's not a huge, uh, a huge problem. So instead you could go artillery infantry. So there's a ton of infantry over here and they could definitely leverage the artillery to, to move in on this base. Is two plus tower Javier ever beatable? He can be beatable, but he can also just kind of win the game very easily. You're coming off a tough loss to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If Javier has three towers, I don't think he's beatable. At two towers, there are times you can win. But you have to keep in mind that he enters into the the mode of if he makes it onto your HQ with an infantry and has his super, you just lose the game. It's, he has over 100% defense. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Nickel punch. Not punching back. We're falling back. I think that is definitely warranted.
to be a little bit careful because uh, being against adder, so like movements can be very deceptive. And then one thing I would like both players to have, and in this case, Necker Punch has one, is an anti air. Because they both are able to give the anti airs extra movement as well. Which can just completely ruin lives. Ooh, we're going for the side slip. I'm not super thrilled about the side slip over here. Or, I mean, there's this, this tank attack over here. Maybe two tank first strikes. But it's into base range, and this tank didn't have a target otherwise. Like, if these tanks just leave over here, then these three tanks will be basically useless, and they, these two tanks will have the uh, tempo advantage to join into the fight around the HQ instead. I'm not super thrilled by that attack. I guess Neko Punch might not get the super. Oh, okay, super got, but not amazing targets. Copter comes in as a nice little blocker. And to keep in mind is T-Copters will die if you if your opponent has one comm tower or more this one then the copter will just always one shot the t-copter if there are no if there are no towers though it's like a 50 50 roll ish just something to keep in mind one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, it does indeed wall enough. Ooh. Aggressive with the copter. Probably fine. Oh, side slip. Okay. Okay, I like the I like the attack over here. I'm a little cautious about the attack down here. Yeah, I like the copter move now a lot more. It's like it's very difficult to trap this copter. One of the uh, big concerns about having a copter go in to attack a base is one you like attack the unit and then like last turn's production and this turn's production just kind of wall you in and they build an anti-air and then <laughs> you just lose your copter. Your Kindle vs. Andy? Oh, that's tough. Yeah. You didn't even bother with Urban Blight? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that map has enough cities to to make the Kindle super do enough damage. Okay. Pick. Yeah. So one of the ways you can try and be annoying to your opponent who has super, for one, this, this did overcharge Neko Punch quite a bit. Um, but also what you can do is make it so like only half of the map benefits from the super. In this case, both maps benefit from the super, so the super is kind of always going to happen. But if like you attack over here, do all this damage, and then kind of fall back over here instead, then Jake is like, ah, do I even want a super? And you can get even more overcharge. Or give them a bad super. Although this super seems like it's Fine. There's not quite enough backup over here. There was like one more tank for new player in range. Uh, things should be going a little bit better. Like this is looking like a really good block rock. Probably should not have attacked from the missile platform there. No anti-air from new player, which 
Definitely coming back to haunt them. A little bit. That was a good... A good retaliation for Neko Punch. And now the top left is looking hunky-dory because all the things got bopped. Like, that's... Uh, I guess the plan is to have a copter try and cover this copter. But you're, like, in base range, so an anti-air gets built, too. It's be looking rough. Money-wise, though, new player is very happy. Oof. So, like, this tank... This build does help protect, like, these tanks. But these guys can just kind of jump on these guys. I'm not quite sure why we're rushing infantry up here. This seems like the kind of situation I would want to just run away from. You don't want to be fighting within base range for so long. Although just an infantry was built last turn, so it's not the worst thing. Yeah, this seems like a pretty happy turn for Jake. Uh, Jake copters don't benefit from block rocks like extra movement and stuff, but they do benefit from all of Jake's day-to-day -day bonus attack on planes and the power increase on that. So, this is like a... No! <laughs> I was going to say this is like a surefire attack from the planes with plus 30% firepower, like big old swing. Uh, and then attacks from the city. So, air units do not benefit from terrain stars at all. Which makes Slash really sad. But they, they do care. Like, if you're Jake or you're Cole or you're Kindle, you care about the terrain you're standing on. You just ignore the terrain stars. So, there's no real reason. Unless you're trying to occupy this city. Um, there's no reason to stand here instead of on the planes it could be trying to set up for the next turn with like the anti can then attack from there but I don't think it's even needed but yeah this is where the attacks just happen Go up here instead and then the full health tank isn't able to join in Next Mac. Interesting. Okay, so this copter is like overloaded, but I think this is a fine attack by uh, by Neko Punch. I mean, we've got triple copter over here, essentially against one copter, plus anti air. So this is a huge turnaround so far for Neko Punch. Uh, even at the end of the turn in unit count, so slight advantage to new player, but... Ooh, they have the same number of infantry. But Neko Punch is like 20k up in uh, unit value, so that's pretty good. For being even in unit count. The Quack. Good morning, every birdie. Okay, mech swing. Bop, bop. Go for the capture. Okay. I mean, what's annoying about this capture is there's not very many units that Jake can use to interrupt this. It's your own way of uh, overloading a copter, I guess. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why the tank is running in hit the infantry. I mean, this does make it harder for Neko Punch to, like, capture the harbor, I guess. But it's gonna be, it's, like, very costly to uh, leave your units open to attack like that. <laughs> that, is, that is very cute. We have a, a wall of units <laughs> defending the copters from the copters. Um, very important, yeah, to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
six. Ooh, the anti-air won't be able to bust through and hit the copter. I mean, that looks, that looks incredibly cute. And I think, I mean, it kind of holds. It doesn't super hold, but it kind of holds. There's obviously like uh, copter tank kills tank, copter kills four health infantry, anti-air stance on city kills copter, and then new players just kind of in a lot of trouble with all these units on the next turn. But um, that would mean that this tank would have to interrupt this capture and the mech would get a swing. Definitely worth it for Neko Punch. Whoa, decided not to do it that way. Well, this is a lot better for new player. Is now both of the copters live. <laughs> you got nah? Oh, I missed what the nah was, was for. Just choose not to. Yeah, sometimes you can just choose not to interrupt. I see, I see. Wow, this is incredibly dangerous. I mean, Neko Punch has to build a copter. Okay. <laughs> Even then. I mean, new player is so close to just winning with an HQ cap here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Maybe next turn. The helicopter. I kind of like these kind of moves. It's the, uh, my units are out of the way, so you'll have to, like, go negative in tempo to kill them. Run away! We got the anti-air. Yeah, with the with the normal power, which new player could definitely I believe, sacrifice to get. Um, maybe not. You just like swap over to start capping here. Nothing currently can reach here. So you don't even have to defend the bottom. This copter can reach, this copter can reach, but can only reach from these two sides. I was thinking transport copter is to move to here, drop off an infantry. I guess you don't actually have a way of... Never mind, it wouldn't work. I thought there was a way to occupy that tile, but it doesn't look like there is. Yeah, you can occupy here and here, but the copter would be able to swoop in, interrupt. And then, of course, these two copters would kill this copter. There is. Use the force. I mean, this guy could do it, but has to uh, has to be the one that captures. Mega Man, I believe that Advanced Warrior did forward it. Yes. I only I only had the time to add the uh, the first time submitters to the to the list. I just got home, hopped on the computer, and started streaming. Max Mac. A little bit of cleanup. All of these copters. <laughs> Charging forward, no fear. I'm so used to... I haven't played Fog in a while, but I'm still used to Fog copter strategies. 
and uh, leading with pure copter can be very dangerous. Well, why did the mech sacrifice itself? Oh, oh, we're trying to get okay. We're trying to get a power. This is a little bit weird of a power. I think it's just to kill the copters off. I say just as if it's like not a big deal. Okay, so it does. It does kill off a lot of copters, but gives the opponent block rock. And there's like two anti-airs. One copter attack. I think all these copters die. And this tank. All die for this attack. It seems very iffy to me. Maybe the tank doesn't die because there isn't actually a planes to attack from. And plus 30% firepower is not enough to get through the defense boost. Unless, unless this tank has chip on it. I mean, I guess they could just kill this, this infantry instead. Boom. This is why I'm saying like block rock holds up really well against Adder. Whoa. One, two, three. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hit from the city, maybe? I don't know why I came down here to hit a nine health infantry. Oh, that did kill. That that tank must have had chip on it. So the way I would have swapped this up for Neko Punch, maybe the idea was just it didn't want the copters to be so exposed to like this anti air, maybe. But uh, since the copters do benefit from the planes defense, you can just like go over here and get a one shot. But I'm pretty sure all three of these copters should have died. I mean, this, this guy clearly should not have gone after this infantry. <laughs> That's okay. It's still a pretty good turn. Block Rock doing work. Yeah. I mean... Famously, plus 30% firepower does not uh, beat plus 10% defense on a city. So I think that tank must have had chip on it. I say famously because every single Vobble Mirror ever with one comm tower, they hit the super and they still can't get their two hit KOs on cities. There's been so much, so much conflict over this harbor. Defense OP, please nerf. Or it might be a roll. It might be a roll instead of uh, not, instead of just. Um, I know it's not guaranteed. And at some point, in your head, you're just like, if it's not guaranteed, it's not real. <laughs> okay, I mean, this looks like it's uh, overstaying its welcome a little bit. After very sad about having to go in there. 
Now, something that new player can do here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is uh, as a move I like to do. It's the, I build an, uh, a bomber to protect my copter from the anti-air. Although, in this case, it's an anti-air getting to attack from a city, so it's not quite as good. It's more something you want to do when they have to attack from, like, planes or roads. This is a really one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a, it's definitely very iffy to have the anti-air on the front lines. But there's only really one copter is defending from, so it's not a huge deal if the anti-air dies and the copter swoops in. There goes that copter. There goes that copter. Uh, this is a fine anti-air for copter trade, I'll say. Because there's enough tank backup. And the distance from the airports and the bases is about the same, so. Oh, well, yeah. Luckily, there's only one copter over here, like, like I was saying. So you lose the anti-air. Uh, and then the copter gets to go in for free hits. Ideally, it would go into a position where it goes for a free hit, but also like blocks you off rather than being in the back of the uh, back of the army. But that is okay. Luckily, you did have a uh, new player did have an anti already built here. Wow. Okay. So. <laughs> We do uh, make use of owning this harbor and go straight for the battleship. Now, the battleship on this map tragically, tragically cannot cover this base. So you can't just lock it down immediately. It's also, I would say, mighty dangerous to build a battleship on this map because the airport can very quickly come over here and harass you. Why did this copter dive in? Comes in and kills a four health tank. We hit another tank. Isn't that tank covered by a tank from the base? No. A new player looks like they're about to die in the in the bottom right here. Can't afford any to build any uh, reinforcements because we built a battleship to hold the harbor. And then, and then walled for the battleship. This might be the idea. Maybe the idea is to go for the comm tower and have the battleship cover it. There's not very many infantry left over here for Neko Punch, so that's very good for for new player. This it's more that this front is about to collapse that I'm that I'm worried about. We do have a 5k income lead, which is nice. Unless it's a grit battleship, that's true. That is true. That is true. Grim has secret tech against Von Bolt. Gets that 40% for the comm tower. Which is just enough. Sure, why this tank's coming down here? Guys, the city never got captured. Tank run away. Swing. Soon we're gonna have a bomber soon. Maybe just copters. Okay. Another thing you can also do to battleships when they have this very constrained. Um, like movement area is you can rush them with artillery because 
if the artillery move into range with the battleship and you have multiple artillery, the battleship can shoot one artillery and the other artillery shoot the battleship. Very similar to how artillery can deal with rockets. It's just you overload it. Neko's punching really well. Is it possible to come back if both players play normally, or does it require an outplay? It, it helps with an outplay, but part of... Um, part of how this kind of thing happens is because Advance Wars, by, by web... And I guess Advance Wars in general has a uh, built-in comeback mechanic, which is that you get 100% of the charge you that you take in damage, and you only... Uh, get 50% of the charge you deal in damage so when you're taking more damage than your opponent you're building up more charge and then when your charge is active you don't gain or when your power is active you don't gain charge so if you're getting a big win off of using your power and then you get hit back you don't gain any like a, there's an offset for your advantages I guess I don't, know. I don't know if that made sense what I was saying there but this kind of back and forth is pretty can be very common uh, in Advance Wars because of the built-in combat uh, comeback mechanic. Although it can be exploited to be sometimes more of a win more button sometimes uh, too with really good charge management. Okay. The new player used the Supa for people that might not know. Adro's normal power takes two bars and uh, gives all the units plus one movement. That's all it does. Well, and the plus 10 plus 10 stats that all powers give everyone. Um, and then the Super takes five bars and it's just plus two movement instead of plus one movement. And also the plus 10 plus 10 stats that everyone gets whenever they have a power active. So usually you'll see adders um, build up some charge so they can do like normal power into normal power into normal power, like three turns of normal powers, and then uh, just enjoy those plus 10 plus 10 stats and plus one movement. To use the super means you needed to get a lot out of that extra movement, which I wasn't quite paying attention if new player needed to use the super. It looks like maybe it was for this huge comm tower surround, which isn't even going to stop it. We got the block rock. Although, I mean, the attack, these tanks will have to strike into battleship range. Yeah, we do have the anti-airs on the way, which makes a lot of sense to me. Because the, the clear answer to the battleship is usually going to be air units. Since the battleship can't strike up, and cruisers are awful. Huge fight down here for Neko Punch. Tank comes down here to be really annoying and try and disrupt the anti air support. We went for a medium tank, okay. And a join cap. The calm tower. The battleship took a shot there. If you don't know, battleships hit land units for the same amount of damage that a rocket does. I think they might hit sea units harder, maybe. Don't quote me. I don't think they're just a rocket with more range. And almost double the cost. Battleship plus carrier combo equals win condition. The tragedy of the carrier is that uh, it alone is not enough to defend against air. One, because a bomber can 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 uh, sit on its outside its max range and then rush into its minimum range, and then you're really sad. And also, a swarm of copters can also take it down because the carrier can only shoot one. And for 30,000, you'd think a carrier could hold off against multiple copters. <laughs> I 
<laughs> the tragedy of the carrier, lesser known Victorian era play, yeah. Only use case of cruisers stopping copter spam. Except co cruisers cost twice as much as a copter. Cruisers, if they cost even just as much as a copter, it would be so much better. Yeah, they're better against subs. Ooh. Heavy tanks here from Neko Punch. I mean, the HQ is looking very vulnerable for new player. This is standard, so. Um, stealths would be an option. Although it looks like both these anti airs actually have sights in range on this, uh, this airport, so you wouldn't want to build one right now. Did get this comm tower, so it is three comm towers to one. Did decide to build a copter. I would also build a copter here. And uh, the idea is it's the tempo, the tempo play. Like if an anti air comes in here and kills your copter, you then kill the anti air off and you just immediately replace the copter. It'll take like three or four turns for your opponents to replace that anti air. Your copter got instantly replaced on buy. So it's a very good trade. Instead, the, the anti just should just kill this copter and, and stay back. If this one's down to one ammo, might as well just go rearm. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice, nice. Because what you really don't want to have happen is that your anti air goes in, it kills the copter, they kill your anti air, and then you just have no defenses, air defenses for your army against an active airport. Ooh, classic play. Copter comes up, kills anti-air from the planes. Okay, it's, it's still got the kill. That, I'm pretty sure that's a roll. That's a very, a very scary Jake army moving in here. A side slip. Okay. It's a nice hit on this infantry since it's the only one that's in range of capturing the HQ. Planes! <laughs> yeah. Well, these heavy tanks are going to be they're worth in the uh, worth their weight in gold here since there hasn't been any like indirects or anything built to try and fend them off and the copters aren't going to be a great defense because uh neko punch has done a good job at preserving these anti-airs Heavy tank spam and just moving out of that HQ. Yeah, battleships up here fighting the good fight. There he gets taken out. You'll hit that infantry. I mean, if all the infantry die, then uh, they can't take your HQ, right? <laughs> what is that? I don't understand why that anti-air moved into danger. I guess it's just going to get covered by a tank and it's fine. Oh, there's the stealth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no! Oh no! If Neko Punch gets the super, it's just a one-shot stealth. Nickel Punch might not see that though. 
No, Neko Punch 100% sees that. No. Pop. Oh my gosh, this is a this is story time. So back when I was just rank one, um, a young Go Seven, uh, rank one in Fog. I don't think in all in all time, but in Fog, uh. I decided I was going to build my first ever stealth <laughs> to, to fight in the game. And I thought uh, that the way a stealth worked is if you want it to be hidden, then you hide it. And that's all it does. That's all hiding does is it just turns it invisible. And otherwise, they're just naturally immune to anti-airs. <laughs> <laughs> And I was flying around on the map with my stealth, attacking the opponent's army, which had anti-airs. But I think my opponent thought the exact same thing because they never attacked my stealth with the anti-air. I didn't find out until I had my stealth attack their anti-air. It was like, why did I take retaliation? I should be invincible. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, if your stealth is not hidden, it can be hit by anti-air. It can't be hit by copters, but it can be hit by anti-airs. It can be hit by cruisers, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just need that confidence. They're like, there's no way this guy would do this, right? Rank one in fog? Just charging me with stealth? It must be impossible that you can hit them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anti-airs, they'll smack your, uh, your stealth. If your stealth is stealth, then the anti-airs can't hit it, and the stealth can hit the anti-air first and stuff. Anti-airs also take relatively little damage from stealth, so they're they're one of the best units to wall against them. Oh my goodness. New player got a pretty big threat on this HQ. I mean the stealth dying is <laughs> Why? <laughs> it does live at one. I mean, it gives a lot of charge. <laughs> Is the idea like, I really want the super? <laughs> I'm willing to sacrifice anything for that super. I mean, you can just build a bomber. The bomber will live the hit. <laughs> Need that charge. It is so much charge. I mean, the mech can come in here and help interrupt. I mean, it, it wouldn't be able to if the medium tank just stood here. I don't know why. It, I don't know why it moved to here. I mean, that seems like game over to me. I don't see a way to both. Uh, there's just not enough units to wall around the HQ. <laughs> Why? The stealth is stealth. Now it's immune to anti-airs.
everything is sacrificing itself for the greater good. But no, ch you'll, new player will get no charge off of this turn. So this is all sacrificed for the for the wee of it. That should be GG. Everything is deleted. Even the stealth defeated by route. What does route end in a draw? Since when? Well, I that was not a draw. Uh, <laughs> Neko Punch won that game. GG. It must be a replay of your bug. It's only day 28. Yeah, I think that was a replay viewer bug. GG. Well played, well played. We all learned about stealths and how they can be hit by ant airs if they're not stealth. Uh, next, we got Paul. All dot power. Olaf versus Max. The longest game? I mean, there's... You mean like the longest actually competitive game? Or do you mean the longest game where all the... It's just one person on one computer hitting intern with two accounts? Um... I've covered like an 80 plus turn game. If you mean time, like real time spent, there's been games that have lasted years. When the time control is very generous. It was, it was Rizo versus, I don't remember who he was up against, but it was a Sturm Mirror. I cast it. I can try and find that something. There is no day limit on Global League. Ooh. There's a cap limit. Was it 96 games? Or 96 turns? Yeah, Redemption. Redemption. That was in the 80s. It was 96. Okay, we have got Olaf versus Max. Fun stuff. Oh yeah, I had a I had a game uh, I guess it I keep forgetting how quickly I rose I guess the game was only like two months long but it was one of my like first 15 games and it was still going when I was rank when I was rank one because it was just going so slow. So it's like fighting 1500s, 1400s, fighting 900. <laughs> just uh, still ongoing. Okay. Here we go. We got Olaf versus Max. Usually Olaf is advantaged in all of these uh, matchups. Oh my gosh. That just... Oh, it, it just can't reach the shoal. Okay. First time I ever used black boats, I could not tell the difference between shoals and oceans. So I, <laughs> I kept for like three turns trying to find the spot I could drop off and or pick up infantry. Oh my gosh. 
So I thought they just went through the exact same thing that I, I had gone through. But they actually just can't reach this tile. Um, right away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You need eight. You need to be Drake or Sammy or Sensei. <laughs> I know, fully 900. Okay, so usually Olaf is going to be the, the favored uh, CO in Tier 2 Fog because he doesn't really care that much. I mean, he cares a little bit, but doesn't care a ton about the information aspect of Fog of War when it comes to his power. He's like, I don't care where your units are, <laughs> what you're doing with them. They all take two damage and now it's snowing. Where for both Max and Eagle, they care a lot about the information aspect of Fog because they need to have their units find your units and hit, and hit them to get value out of their powers. So, um, you'll see a lot of Olafs in Tier 2 because they're very easy to play and it's very, very effective to be able to just say everything gets hit I don't need to be super on point with the vision game and all that stuff I don't even have to worry too much about overextending because now it's snowing and all your units are slower that kind of thing Eagle and Max have like better day to days Eagle's got arguably a better super but the way it will often work is like for Max, Max uses his super, or maybe he uses his normal power, gets a really nice attack off on Olaf, does a ton of damage, and then Olaf hits the super in response. And then the Olaf, uh, the Max units that attacked forward are now kind of stuck, overextended in the snow and injured, so Olaf's able to clear those up and kind of equalize the unit count there. Except now Max also has everything in the back is injured. So now Olaf's just kind of better off. Uh, usually going on from that point and then against eagle winter fury costs two bars less than lightning strike so it usually goes off first and then eagle is stuck with the, the, the situation of do i lightning strike in the snow with my inner units with less movement um so that i don't give charge to my opponent because the other situation is you wait until you uh, aren't in the snow so that you get to use all your movement for your double moves happy happy eagle but all of your attacks are giving charge to Olaf so Olaf went winter fury and then you go lightning strike and then Olaf immediately hits winter fury again and that can kind of offset all of the damage you do or you can be like Rhymer and just be like <laughs> as as eagle and be like fine you hit me with winter fury I am just not going to use lightning strike until you uh, will just die from this attack and just stand here with a gigantic army and suck up like three Winter Furies in a row and just not fight until there's enough stuff on the board that the Lightning Strike will immediately end the game. That is a very difficult way to play though. What are you guys saying? Indirects are these rockets cannot hit submerged subs. It's true. It's true. Long time. Pop for about 75 days. Long as real time Google Week match was three months. Google Week got day 30. Oh my gosh. I cannot make Max Orange Star. I have them as yellow. Um yellow comet uh, slash gold comet now and cobalt ice because this is a nice uh, color matchup for colorblind. I don't want to make it difficult to de decipher units. I say that when sometimes I make them both cobalt ice and they laugh. Uh, imagine coming back to an ongoing game from your early days and having to rectify all those misplays if there were any. <laughs> I 
I have, I have tons of misplays all the time. Very autistic, so you really like my profile picture. The penguin. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. Also autistic. Yeah, no worries. Jesus, Joy, RK. Welcome, welcome. I've got an Olaf Fog game right now. It's called We Do a Little Snowing. Yep, 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 yep. For advanced sports replays, do we just download a replay? Upload like a Google Drive or something, and then you link all that down on Discord. No, uh, all you have to do is when you hit the replay button on Advanced Wars, there's a download button that shows up. You click that and you just drag and drop the zip into the Discord chat with me. And then I get it. Easy peasy. So right now, Max, well, this is Max. Max has got double recon into tank. That's okay. I mean, max recons do hit really difficult or really, really hard. And it's a big map, so usually they're going to find some purchase somewhere. They're just not quite as scary as a presence as max tanks are. Because an Olaf tank, like if Olaf plays a more defensive style, where you just have tanks defending your captures, kind of like what Olaf is doing right now then the recons won't be able to do anything. They're still just as scared of an Olaf tank as they would be of a max tank. Have a good one, Glitch Hunter. Well, Fluffy, of course you like that waiting strategy. You're a big, big staller. got trapped that's a little uh, a little bit embarrassing usually that happens if people aren't uh viewing the replay which a lot of people don't view the replay for for various reasons oh, moving out like these captures yeah right now the olaf tank count is looking pretty nice if this one sticks around too long it's gonna meet a max tank and be really really sad so it is gonna want to reach uh, retreat and Max and uh, Olaf can just be like playing on the defensive because uh, yeah, if it like attacks up here, that's way too aggressive. Even moving all these infantry up is pretty pretty gnarly because as you can see, there's a huge uh, deficit in uh, reinforcements. The tank just stood here. Whoa, at least go back into the forest. Um, yeah, like you can see all these units building up. This benefits, it does benefit both Max and Olaf because Max's powers scale with the number of like vehicles he has to benefit from them. But it works out better for Olaf than Max when the armies are really large because Olaf scales with the uh, opponent's army like the larger the opponent's army is then the more damage that Olaf's powers will do against it because it hits every single unit where uh, Max doesn't really like it when the opponent gets a big army they want to have Max wants to have more vehicles than the opponent and just smack them all down. Slightly Max is slightly more of a, a win more power setup than than Olaf is. Although Olaf's will of course help him win more by by just making everything easier to kill. It just means that when these maps are this big, a huge unit counts build up. Olaf likes it a lot more than Max does. Fluffy stalls never. Yeah, you, you won't need Nitro to to this to, to send me a replay. It is indeed rather small. Okay, I do like 
that Olaf is running away from the top here. Max should be able to just clean all of this up and get some nice econ. Very good. This is kind of like that strong side, weak side dynamic where Max has sent pretty much all the vehicles to this front. Olaf has sent pretty much all of them over here. Max sees the vehicles down here. So you can really just completely slam into the other front and just kind of trade fronts, which in this case is going to be beneficial for Max most likely just because Olaf rushed this one. So there's less uh, properties for Olaf for Max to lose on this front than Olaf does over here. And it's not like we have the super coming uh, anytime soon here. So no huge concerns about a Winter Fury catching you like mid front shift or anything. Leave it. Contact, tank attack. Okay. Max coming on in here. I would prefer if Max waited just a tiny bit so that the tank didn't attack alone, but it does have double tank backup and copter backup, so it's not the end of the world. Um, Olaf will have to send like both tanks most likely, or maybe just one to attack uh, up here into these like nasty terrain types to uh, get this revenge hit. So definitely not the end of the world for going, for going in early. You just prefer to like have a triple strike and get really far ahead in the fight immediately. Oh. Yeah, I have to stand on the on the road. Sad days. Okay, so they did both move forward. So Max will get two very good swings here. I assume we're gonna see a max power. That'll probably be enough to defend this. If the artillery was already in position, it would be a little bit more uh, dangerous for your boy Max. But as is, I think Max should be able to clean this up with a power. And I assume we're going to see a power because the anti-air gets to reach the copter with a power. Now, something that happens a lot, a lot and I assume it's going to happen in this game is that one person gets charged to use their power. And this is kind of like the comeback mechanic I was talking about uh, in the last game. But this happens a lot. You use your you get enough charge to use your power. You get a big turn using your power, but that just charges up your opponent all the way to their super. So you use your power and that they use their super against you to either equalize or even start getting ahead in the game. I do like those antires hidden in the woods, though. Sometimes you'll do enough damage so that you'll like overcharge your opponent, and that will be always very juicy. But this is like almost the worst case, where it's you did exactly enough to give them the super, but didn't overcharge them all and when you're dealing with with super based co's you'll want to overcharge them so they get fewer supers in the game pop arguably you would not want to go for that anti-air attack because it's pretty easy for max to replace that copter it's very difficult for olaf to replace this anti-air But in this case, it looks like it's going to work out. Oh, we look at right before the super goes off. 
like Olaf's down 15,000 in unit value, and then you pop the super. And now up 7k, and then the attacks get to happen this turn. And it's just like that, it's just like I'm back in the game, yeah! Kind of, kind of even. The unit counts where it should be. You want to be about half a turn ahead, so one or two at the end of your turn. So that's basically uh, where they're at right now. And then you'd want to be, well, you want to be more than these, but if you're just half a turn of income ahead in unit value, then you're also just even. So there's a little bit ahead there for Paul Power. But uh, oftentimes, doesn't look like it's going to be the case this time, but oftentimes with Olaf Super, it kind of hits you twice. Because you can do so little logistics on the turn of snow that Olaf can kind of hit you again because you weren't able to, to regroup or anything. Like, look at the infantry. It can move a single, a single snow-covered plains tile. It can't go two because it costs two and they only have three movement. Ugh. It really hits <clears throat> air units really bad too, because they don't get the benefit from roads. So it just goes down to three from six. It's even worse for bombers. They go from seven down to three, which means they can just kind of get chased down by an Olaf uh, anti air. Running on back. I do like Olaf retreating to the relative shape, the safety of the artillery. Yeah, not too much stuff got smacked on the on the follow up turn. It really maxes ahead by a lot of income after all this. Which is pretty rare against Olaf since all of the infantry get hit by the snow, which slows down all their captures. This might be a, a little over eager, over eager for Max. But there's only one artillery in a single tank currently to, to fight this fight. So definitely not the end of the world. I wonder where the uh, artillery is. Oh no! Well, the copter will be sacrificed. I'll try and save the city. Um, he'll probably save the city. Usually in these kind of situations, I think it's better to just let the city go so that you can better build up your units and then you just come in with the units, you fight off all the defenders and you just take the cities back. It's a lot better than going in, interrupting a city and losing a whole copter. Uh, the anti air definitely should have attacked from the forest though. He doesn't want to get picked off. Good night. So Max is being a little bit wary over here. Didn't dive in to try and hit the artillery, which I think is probably a good idea. Probably want to use the recon first, but that's okay. That's just a general tip. I mess that up all the time myself. Yeah, sometimes you can get like a max super wipe out 
most of Olaf's stuff before he uses uh, the Winter Fury. That's definitely something that can happen. But again, Mac, er, Olaf's Winter Fury scales with the opponent's units. So even if you wipe out all of uh, Olaf, er, all of Olaf's units, you still get hit by a nasty Winter Fury, and sometimes that alone is enough to get uh, Olaf enough to get back into the game. Unless you completely killed everything. You could eat the Winter Fury and try and scare Olaf with a max super. But I think that's just playing a worse um, eagle at that point. It's a tough matchup for sure for Max. I think bullying a lot with the day to day to try and get a nice econ advantage is the way to go. And that's kind of what's happened here. And then you can uh, usually the way with Max is you do a the unit combo uh, you try and go for unit composition wins the like copter tank and then you can use your power to wipe out all of their anti airs and stuff like that so they have nothing to deal with the copters I was expecting the super did he have the super we oh, did have the super well, Max is one of those CEOs that you do get to choose whether or not you want the super or the normal power. Because they're both very effective. Uh, the super just gives plus one more movement and a little bit more damage. So instead of plus one movement, it's plus two. Instead of 50%, it goes up to 80%? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. It's just a lot of damage. Now it's a 70, right? The normal power is 50% total. The super 70% total, I think. They both give plus 20%. They like double and then triple his day to day, but then he also gets the plus 10 plus 10 for having a power active. Is that right? Maybe? What do you think I would. What's the Winter Fury? Oh, 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 oh. Like 20k ish. Very good play for Max to make sure that there was another anti air ready. And this is where Olaf feels kind of sad about having charged in, kind of trickled units in rather than came with a big old blob and said, Smack, these are all mine again. Max living the high life, pairing these units up 6k, 16 to 22 is very good. You're going to have one property flip in Olaf's favor, which actually helps a lot. Now it's only down 4k, still a little bit more manageable. He doesn't set his attack to 30%. It must be plus 30%. His attack's normally 30 or 20%. It doesn't just give him plus 10% more, right? Oh my gosh, it is only plus 10% more. I thought it was 20% more. Wow. I guess it is 20% more with the extra plus 10. Okay. I was giving him another 10%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 20, 40, 60, okay, okay. Yeah, okay.
You know what? It's probably including a comm tower that's always there. I don't know. Don't mind me. <laughs> you learn things every day. Hi, everyone. Okay, Max is doing a front shift. Um, I don't like this front shift because Max is really bad at killing this black boat. Olaf has shown to have an artillery and is hitting this black boat all the time with Winter Furies. So I would have expected Max to want to have the army staring down the army, especially with like a normal power almost ready. Because this race looks really bad from uh, Max's perspective. Unless there was like a bomber with this. <laughs> no, 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 don't doubt the penguin math. You can doubt the penguin. Okay, now Max is going to try and defend with the reinforcements. Olaf is technically also trying to defend with the reinforcements, but Olaf's bigger play here should just be to essentially sacrifice units into Max to try and get a super and win the game for sure. Because like, good luck defending this in the snow. It's like, this is enough. And then you just like spam bombers or something and charge the enemy forces. Even just a normal power can probably uh, shut everything down for defending this. Because a lot of it's going to be air. All the air units slow down a lot in the snow. Yeah, this looks game over. Yep, just hit Blizzard. And start capping a block. And that should be GG. Uh, so you might be like, oh, I only need one more movement to get an attack with this copter. No, 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 no. You need two more movement. If you pop the max normal power here, you will not gain any movement. It's two required per step. So going from six to seven is essentially nothing. So here we go. We got the super. The copter... You reach this tile. You rebuild the tank. Um, I think the recon and the anti are the only things that could possibly get here. And there's the resign. GG. Snow be strong. Yeah, I think Max probably could have. Uh, just won that game in the long run to the econ lead if the armies had just stayed staring at each other. It's very iffy to go for the HQ race there. But GG, GG. <laughs> 180 max. <laughs> Well played, well played. Here we got... Oh, against Cat with Yarn! Cole versus Adder, I'm burnt out and too tired to dance. Cat with Yarn, long time viewer, long time submitter. Um, Shadow in the chat. I don't know if Shadow's here right now. Uh, here, Shadow. There, anyway, Shadow was here earlier. All heal. All hail the king of the penguins. Cat with yarn hype. One of these days, I'm gonna have a 
um, the collage of the Cat with Yarn games. You can see all the improvement over the years. <laughs> years. <laughs> The high funds map with standard rules pog oh it is but this this got put into global league standard maybe they do look very similar to neutral properties all hail the penguin king No black boat. The black boat is usually a fog, a fog thing. Usually. Sometimes you see it in uh, other modes too. I mean, it's not global leaks, Yeah. And we, we put the black boat on, uh, on the HQ in Fog so that you don't have to worry so much about just getting rushed down with HQ cheeses. That's part of the Go7 meta. It was around around before me, but I've I've pushed for it too. Alrighty. So artillery are pretty good on this map. So are neo tanks, but we're not going to see that many neo tanks in this, I imagine. Oh, you're right. The high funds version has a B boat next to the neutral base. I imagine that's because in high funds you have to deal with uh, Sturm. Blackboats are on HQs to give Kindle a needed buff. How does that buff Kindle? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That takes two turns. If it was recon, infantry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sitting here, infantry moves to here. Oh no, that doesn't. Yeah, then the recon moves to here, and then it interrupts you. <laughs> yeah, on high funds, usually if you see black boats like that, is Stern banned? Maybe it is. Might not have always been, but usually if you see black boats like that, it's because they were like, oh, we don't have an easy way of stopping someone from denying this base we want to have here. So we'll just put a black boat. But that's not quite uh, such a concern in standard. I mean, I don't know if that's really a buff to Kindle, though. I mean, she is good at that, though. That's true. She's not as good at it as, it, as Drake is. Just run the black belt out of fuel. No shots fired. Okay, both players go for the neutral base right away. As you would expect. And we'll see if someone goes for... Looks like we're going to start rushing down to the... Airport, maybe? Maybe? Um, if we're going to go for, like, artillery or tanks... Whoa! It's a late... A late APC. We'll see what that's used for. It does have this infantry set up to hop into it. But usually late APCs are unhappy APCs. That saved a turn so far get to that airport and they'll be able to lunge these infantry for it but there's gonna be tanks already to, to interrupt 
It's a little iffy, a little iffy. But the, the reason why later APCs are usually worse is because it gives your opponent more time to have vehicles out to stop you from getting the, the juicy, juicy properties. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a corner airport here, okay. Very contested, contestable comm towers. Neither one of these are locked down by an artillery right now though. Or even contested. Both players get their um, towers. Cat with Yarn does have an artillery ready to defend this one. Some tanks moving out. He's a little bit sad. The airport is captured. So the tank is here to help cover the APC. But a lot of these other infantry are looking kind of free right now. So we might have another tank move over or tank get built. Ooh. Uh oh. Oh, no, I guess it's one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six. Uh, maybe we'll see. Cat with yarn can um, like infantry here, infantry here, and then the tank is forced to retreat into this direction. It's not quite trapped. You probably just go up here and hit the airport. Goes for the tank first strike on the city. Now, this is a tank that can just get trapped here and killed off, though. So, that is something I would not recommend. Uh, but it's a similar situation as to why this tank might not want to, like... Like, you might be like, oh, look, this... This infantry is a free hit. That's not a free hit. The other infantry can surround it in place. That could be pretty dangerous. Now, this infantry was a free hit. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, because uh, if your tank hits here, no other tank can hit it. So you're you're safe there. And even if the infantry surrounds you, there's enough supporting infantry to free the tank. Yeah, the tank would like in, in my head, the tank interrupts the airport and then the tank dies. And it's not quite worth it for the tank. Yeah, here the tank can get surrounded. Looks like we're gonna have to deliver the APC infantry. Not to there. You might go here and drop it in these woods. Okay, well, this tank's gonna be able to go and smack this mech, maybe. Maybe it'll just not have any good options. Or it can go hide on this city. A little weird to give it a place to escape. Oh, it can't escape. Aha, the copter has it pinned. Okay. This tank is not safe going for that attack, though. <laughs> you decide to go after the mech. Okay. Down goes that tank. Very nice for Cat with Yarn. Kind of loses a tank uh, down here, but gets the tank up here. So not the end of the world. World, and we have some nice pressure over here. Artillery guarded by some infantry. Something I've noticed that Cat with Yarn, since the very beginning, has had some pretty good instincts when it comes to blocking for units. The tank couldn't block the base because the mech can probably just kill it. As it as it did. It might have... No, because it, it could have always walked onto the road and did the swing. Get the coal plus 10%. Juicy, juicy. If you don't know, mechs have uh, tank ammo in that in that gun they have on their on their shoulder. They strike 
vehicles as if they are a tank for three shots. There, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to reach that. So things are looking okay. This this copter is even outside of an average super range. Huge pressure from Cole charging up the center. Our cat with yarns got more pressure on the sides. You have some more artillery coming out for Cole right now. Try and hold this comp tower, it looks like. Whoa. Okay. I would normally say that I don't like the anti airs being on the front lines, but if you can hit the opponent's tanks, then things can, can definitely turn around. Infantry are very bad against anti air. Copters are pretty bad against anti air. Anti air are okay against anti air, but they're not like amazing. Uh, I don't think the artillery is needed to be here because it's not actually defending against any threats. So, the way I would change this turn is just this infantry goes and starts capturing the city and then the artillery can guard that capture rather than hanging out on these, uh, on these mountains. I think even if you don't hit the mech, the mech can kill you with the plus, uh, an extra plus 10% because you're in, it's an injured tank, right? It might take an infantry strike. Ooh, copter. One, two, three, four. Oh, so sad. The only thing I would change about this for for Cole is you really want the copter to be protected by the artillery. So when the anti-air kills it, you get to fire on the anti-air. So instead of attacking from the city here, I would just make sure to attack from these trees. So that the artillery defends the tiles that the anti-air is going to strike you from. I'd also, <laughs> I'd also retreat with this army. This is, this is overextended into uh, into base range, and the there's still nothing really to do with the anti-air coming after these copters. It'll be a very painful turn for Cole here. A very slow push on the right for. Uh, Cat with yarn, I would be a little bit more aggressive with this. The R2 3 are behind. You can always force these very even trades. This is <laughs> this is way too respectful of the comm tower. So what you what you tend to do is you put the infantry on the comm tower. Maybe you try and wall it off and stuff like that. But even if you don't have even if you don't do that, your opponent moves forward with a unit to interrupt, or maybe two units, and then you shell them to pieces with your artillery and you get these positive trades. It's like you're, th you're taking the comm tower, but it's not really about the comm tower. It's about the units your opponent has to lose to stop you from taking the comm tower. You would never expect to actually get the comm tower. We got the trail of woe. Okay, the tank does reach the Xantire. Okay, well, the artillery are going to have plenty of shots here. As I was saying. Well, the tank didn't hit the anti-air. That's a very weird trail of woe. Because Cole has the reversed charge bar, where it's three for the normal power, two for the super, 
it's usually more cost effective to go for supers with coal, but that does mean you need to have very impactful supers. And that was not a very uh, impactful super. There's a lot of just kind of running. It's a it's a fake wall. So if you're ever trying to judge, I mean, it's a real wall. It's just a weak wall. I call a weak wall a fake wall. Um, it's fine though because there's two artillery. But um, if you ever want to judge the strength of a wall, you always it's usually going to be walling infantry. But any wall, you always want to look at the ends of the wall. So we have got two ends because it's a really short wall. Uh, there's this infantry, and it's a really good end of the wall. It's in defensive terrain. It's in the forest, and on one side of it is the edge of the map, so your opponent can never, ever, 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 ever attack from over there. So that's great. There's only one side that this guy can be attacked from, and he's in the forests. That's pretty good. This guy has two sides that can kill him off, that can attack him, and he's in the plains. So he's very easy to be taken out. And then as soon as this guy falls, you'll notice, oh my gosh, Suddenly, this guy is no longer quite so strong. Now there's two tiles he can be attacked from. And that's that's why the end of the walls become a big deal. Because it's it's not just that guy. It's that guy falls and then suddenly all of them can fall. Or, or a breakthrough can happen. <laughs> APC blocker. That was a weird thing. Usually you would just retreat with all the infantry rather than just send one up. Because, I mean, the artillery are just going to shell away. And this is where you'd like to have the artillery guarding this capture. Because then the tank hits you and you go, bam. Okay. Rob, looking at this situation for Cat with Yarn, it's probably hit the normal power, charge in, win the game-ish kind of situation. Uh, Anti-airs do the same amount of damage to infantry and mechs, which is to say they totally destroy them, especially on roads. The anti would probably prefer to go after the mech there. That's okay. Maybe it's got other dreams. Look this artillery is somehow going to survive the day. It'll get its one shot. Yeah, so that attack can go a little bit more. A little bit more deadly. Um, by just having like the antires go after the, the mech, and then you use the furthest back units first so that they don't occupy. They don't have their spots stolen, and then you just kind of gnaw away at the foundations here. That's okay. Cole still resigns. GG. In these situations, sometimes it's fine if the artillery is alive, as long as everything else is taken out, because what's the artillery do? It fires at one thing, and then it just dies on the next turn, because it's not like it's the move or anything. So GG. Well played. Cat with Yarn gets the victory. I liked the artillery pushes. I think they could have been a little bit more aggressive. But the general idea is still good. We had a nice collapse. Definitely look out for uh, Eunice getting trapped. Everyone, everyone falls for Eunice getting trapped, though. It's, it's the truth. It's so difficult to see it. Okay, we're going to get one more game in here. Zeratul versus Milk Tea with Pearls. What's oh, an Olaf Mirror? 
You will see a lot of these in fog. Here too. Grab a drink. Penguin is back. Olaf mirror. Now, a lot of people don't like Olaf mirrors, myself included, specifically for playing them. I think they're okay to watch, but uh, there's a huge advantage to getting the first power in Olaf mirrors because. Uh, it means that you start penguini. Uh, it means that you start regaining charge sooner after the first powers get fired off. Because yours went first, so yours comes off first. And it means that you got a turn, or at least partly, where you had full health units with a power boost on them, and your opponent had eight health units. So that's a nice, a nice turn to have. And then your opponent's response turn, they knocked all your units back down to eight, and then they have eight health units against your eight health units, and you both have powers active. So it's a much weaker uh, situation from that perspective. Although sometimes in order to get the first power, you have to put your units in very bad situations, and that can sometimes outweigh the benefits of getting the first power. So we'll see how that all plays out. It's just a huge dynamic that happens in Olaf mirrors. Uh, it looks like milk with tea pearl, milk tea with pearls is, uh, that's boba, right? Milk tea with pearls. Um, he's going to go with a recon opener and Zeratul is going to go with an artillery opener. They're both being aggressive on their two base side. Just the recon. It is outside of the vision. We'll see what this imagery decides to do. You, typically, I would say it's pretty foolhardy to uh, to move down here, and it's pretty. I mean, it's. I can understand doing this move. It's kind of a move of like I don't, I don't expect there to be any danger, so I can kind of move wherever I want, but. If the goal is like, I'm going to move to capture this city, then you'll want to go into the most defensible terrain to do that that reaches that spot, in which case it'd be these woods. And if you do that, then this recon opener is, it's just so sad. It's like, I ran, I rushed up here, I saw the infantry move into the woods. I can stand on this city if I want to, but boy, is that dangerous. I don't know if the tank's on its way or anything. And they just stare at me in the woods potentially block off my escape route as a tank comes over. Is there a purpose to those black boats? The, the, the point of the black boats is that your opponent can't build an APC, rush down and just take your HQ. Oh, 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 you mean these black boats? I have no idea what these black boats are for. You can do very little boosts with the infantry. I don't even know if the boost matters. Like you can hop in, boost to here. But like the extra movement didn't even matter. It still takes the same number of... Yeah, I don't know. I guess it helps mechs. Style points. Yeah, you get lot, lot, lots of style points. Um, it makes Rachel sad. It makes Missile Power sad. You can... You can heal units that come back this way. It, it can repair copters. The sad days for their zero tool, learning a harsh lesson about where you send infantry. 
It's okay, milk tea with pearls is also gonna learn a harsh lesson about this uh, this calm tower, I imagine. It's like calm tower I got. Yeah. And then it's like good luck holding it, buddy. Capture, fire, kill. Oof. Don't even start the capture. Go for the the city instead. I probably would have gone for the capture. Just because the opponent owns the comm tower. So stealing that away as soon as possible would be a good idea. I mean, I I, I do recognize the comm towers don't give any. But it isn't unheard of that someone can make a stand to contest this. I'm surprised that Milk Tea with Pearls is just kind of ignoring the situation. Oh, very dangerous. I guess it probably doesn't matter because Zeratul is like, yeah, my opponent already knows my tanks here because the recon sees it. So it's fine to attack there. I still, that in this case, it is fine to do, but I don't know if the recon was actually known about though. Maybe a nice artillery push into the middle. One cap on the comm tower. I don't think I would join cap that just because it's only join capping for a single one value and you join a full health infantry. So instead what you can do is just move that one health infantry to here and just be a really annoying blocker. Or you can move it back to here if you don't want the two health infantry to hit you and you're helping defend your artillery from uh, vehicles that might zoom in. And then you just start the capture with a full health infantry. You'll have one last capture point, but you'll have another unit to be a blocker. Slash check for vision and stuff. Kind of tax in, copter tax in. Save the comm tower. Copter's gonna be super sad though. And that's where it, this is wouldn't have mattered whether or not it was joined or not. That would have still happened. So could have had another little blocker back here, which I think is going to end up mattering. It, it can often be pretty easy to dive in to take a, a pot shot at an artillery, even in the woods. Very patient on this side, though. There gets to fire at some infantry. Moves on over. Big old brawl in the center. We're kind of running out of infantry for both players here. Your full health infantry is going to go for the hit over here. There's artillery. Oh, oh, wow. So greedy to send the two health infantry in. <laughs> I think two health infantry need plus 20% firepower to have a chance. Isn't that right? I don't remember. Whoa, this guy didn't even swing. Wow, okay. So Zeratul just gets that comp. What was that? <laughs> I guess the, so the recon can hit here. Okay. Unneeded. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. You can have the infantry attack here to reveal this infantry for the recon to attack, but it's okay. It's, I mean, it's fine. It doesn't matter. A little gutsy to chill on the front lines, but it's fine. You got the 
the properties there. Artillery moves on up. A bit of an artillery stare down here. This is not a strong wall. I've talked about this in fog a lot. You really don't want to have your copters on the front lines. It's very easy for anti-airs to be in range in the in the fog. Maybe in woods, but just in the fog. And then suddenly, it's not such a great wall. And that's exactly what happens. Unfortunately, there's no extra firepower here for uh, milk tea with pearls. So these tanks on the cities are completely un untouchable. If you have plus 10% firepower, there's like a 30% chance that you can uh, kill a unit on the city. It's not great odds. Zooms in. Pink smack. Smacky. Interesting that the anti decided to go for the infantry. Sitting there pretty exposed. Weld. Might be a little overconfident. A slow and insidious killer. The only reason being that, like, this is the airport's like right here. There's a lot of value in your opponent, uh, for your opponent to kill it or uh, kill off the entire. The milk tea with pearls is going to get the first Winter Fury. Down a lot of units, though. You can see how nice this turn is. All of the units un unhampered by this 2 damage. Plus 10, plus 10 stats. Swing around, get all these little pickoffs. Both players are going to be immune to the snow because they're Olaf. Ah. <laughs> Life is good <laughs> with the first Winter Fury. And then Zeratul gets the second Winter Fury. Does get to hit a bunch of units. The exchanges are not going to be quite so nice. And then this is where it's, it's, it really starts to hurt. It's like, sure, Zeratul's got plus 10, plus 10 stats here. Milk Tea with Pearls does not. Uh, but that's a, a pretty minor thing. What's a big deal is that any combat that happens this turn will only give charge to Milk Tea with Pearls. Which will just give a nice charge advantage for the next super. Best part about Olaf Mirrors is nobody gets to ca cap anything. Such is the way of all... <laughs> all global damage mirrors. It's the worst when you start a capture with a 5 health infantry. You're like, oh fine, it's going to get this capture in 4 turns. And then it gets hit with global damage, so it becomes three health infantry. And then it's like, all right, I cap a few more times. Still got like four turns to go or whatever. And then it gets hit again, and it goes down to a one health infantry. <laughs> it just never gets the capture. Nothing comes to hit it. Just global damage stops it. This is very gutsy. A desperate play from Zero Tool. <laughs> I myself am shocked that there's no anti air left with this army. But look at how much of a charge advantage Milk Tea with Pearls has here. It's like 
a bar and a half or so. That's that's a lot. It almost, not quite, but it almost guarantees the milk tea with pearls is all is going to get the uh, the super first on the second round. However, Zero Tool does have a little bit of an income lead and has the double comm tower advantage, which is pretty, pretty nice. You like having plus 20% firepower and your opponent has plus zero. Copters do get chewed up a bit here. Unfortunately, especially because this copter doesn't actually cover its fellow copter. You have a 3k income lead, which is nice. Antire gets taken out. I'm surprised we don't have more Antire on the way again. The 8 health infantry is going for this capture, so there's a little bit of time to delay. Milk Tea with Pearl definitely getting the super first. I don't think the four health. There, there was probably a better attack than the four health uh, copter swing. Even like this infantry attacking the recon or this one better. Four health copter still has quite a bit of use in it. And these attacks are not stellar, though. Even with the, even with that uh, power advantage here. It's looking like Zero Tools got just enough stuff. It's like Winter Fury. Pop, 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 pop. Definitely doesn't hit as hard, but we're if it's coming down to just maintaining a, uh, a capture advantage, then this is just good enough. Everything gets injured. Stops all captures from progressing. You just maintain a nice 3k income lead. And live the good life. Pop. And also, milk. That time, milk tea with pearls did not actually get that uh, that much charge during that downtime turn, which means that when you're the player ahead, you can sometimes kind of like sacrifice some of your army going for poor trades in order to generate more power than the opponent that's behind and actually get that first power in a way that or the, on the third round end up getting the first power and getting like a complete knockout blow but we'll see how it goes it's a lot of tanks moving up over here Ante are gone. Pink is the nice repair. Oh, here we got the medium tank. On this map, I think I've seen the medium tanks be much happier built in the center because when they go around over here, it's not so bad because Zeratul's kind of worked at this pipe team a lot, so it'd be pretty quick to, to break it free. But it gets stuck on these like double forests and then it moves out and then it gets caught with these pipe seams and artillery locking it in and stuff like that. So it can be pretty nasty. But Milk Tea with Pearls just resigns there. So GG uh, for Zeratul. I like the patient play around the comm tower, just having the artillery lock it down and just kill off all the units that come to, to stop it until they can't stop it anymore. Uh, that definitely a little bit, a little bit too many uh, times where units got kind of bopped from overextensions. This is kind of an overextension here, but I think it's probably destined to work out. This uh, pipe scene wasn't been, wasn't broken, so the copters can't quite just lurch straight forward into this and uh, help turn the tide. The other thing was, of course, 
being a little bit more protective of the infantry as a default when moving towards captures will be good. We're going to start out with a very special game. Ooh, that's great. All right. Hope everyone enjoyed. That was our, our Monday games. And then on Wednesday, I don't know if I'll play live or we'll just watch live. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. We'll see. But I hope everyone enjoyed. Here's your apple for the day. Have a good one, and I'll see you in two. Thanks for watching. It's Go Seven, King of the Penguins. Of all the penguins, he is king. It's Go Seven, King of the Penguins. Being king of the penguins, that's his thing.